Hey everyone, this is Kim with the 3D Mojo channel, and today I want to show you a bridge rectifier diode. This one is rated at 1000 volts up to 35 amps. Um, it can handle a peak amperage of about 400 amps, but you know, realistically, come on, that's a, that's a lot of power, and uh, I'll never even see anything close to that. Some guys use these to repair their old uh, box welders, the buzz box type of systems. Um, I got these because I needed something to actually help me to fix my air conditioner uh, with a little custom project. I was putting a um, misting system on there and it required a 24 volt AC uh, powered solenoid and I didn't have one of those and they were about $50 and I thought, you know what, I'll just buy one of these and uh, I'll convert it to DC and I picked up about a $6 solenoid and everything's working just fine now. Um, just a bunch of quick information in case people would like to know the information about dimensions. It's about 1.35 uh, inches square or in this case in metrics it's approximately, now this is not accurate, but approximately 28 millimeters square. Uh, the height on this in inches is about uh, 0.44 or approximately I'd say 10 to 11 millimeters if that makes any difference. Uh, they do rate the hole as a number 10 standard screw. I haven't uh, measured that in metrics to see what you can get through there, but um, that's taken about a 5.78 millimeter uh, hole here. Now, the nice thing about these is that they're quite easy to identify the terminals. Basically, you've got an AC in for two wires and you're gonna have a DC out, a positive and a negative. And if you'll notice on this particular one, you have three blades for the terminals that are the same direction and one that goes opposite. This opposite one is the one that's going to be the positive DC. So this one over here is labeled AC and what you do is you take the AC side here and put one AC uh, wire and it can be any voltage up to a thousand volts. And the same thing over here, you put the AC on this side and then you're going to use this as your DC positive and your DC negative. So, I put in 24 volts AC, I got 24 volts DC. You put in 12 volts AC, you get approximately 12 volts DC. So, let's do a little experiment here and let's see what it uh, does. I have a um, old school uh, Ohmite, or yeah, O-H-M-I-T-E, V-T, variable transformer. And um, this guy still works pretty good. I'm very impressed with it, but it's an AC transformer. It doesn't really do me a lot of good for project uh, because I need DC voltage for most of the things that I work on. This is only 3.5 amps, um, but let's see, we've got this in the correct mode. We've got this here. So let's go ahead and connect this up. So we know that this is our going to be our actual DC positive and our opposite over here will be our DC negative. So I am put, put the AC side here and here. So I've got these two leads coming out, and one thing you want to make sure when you're doing something like this is, now I'm trying to do it so you can see it, but one of the things I do is make sure I push all my insulation of the uh, terminals up as high as I can in order to not have any type of short that might hit the um, actual housing that we have down here, because that is a metal housing. All right, so now we've got our AC connected here, and the ohmite is turned off, and the power is currently at zero. I am going to take... Uh, this positive lead here going to my fluke meter which just turned off so let's turn that back on and uh, let's put this on the positive side and again trying not to uh, allow it to hit the bottom and arc out now the way that's done uh, it'll hit plastic before anything else and let's see if I can wrap this around here and not short anything out There's not a lot of room to work in this sorry about that um, I'm gonna put this one up high also just to keep it off the uh, metal just for the sake of the experiment now um, we're going to go ahead and turn this on and let's apply a little bit of voltage. We're going to start out with about 10 volts to begin with on the ohmite. And uh, let's see, I should be actually reading the actual voltage coming off to give you a better example. But you can see right here that uh, DC voltage, here, we'll get this to 10 volts DC and then we're going to check the AC and see what it really says. All right, let's bring that down a little up a little bit. This is a very, uh, you know, picky little transformer thing. It's just a big old transformer with a adjuster in the middle of it. Oh, where are we going with that? A coil. Okay, so yeah, almost had it. We'll go with that. 10.12. Um, now, I'm going to turn this off for just a moment because I don't want to have any shorts while I disconnect these leads. And I'm going to take these two off, switch this back to here. Remember, it was 10.12 volts. 
and uh, I'm just going to gently connect this on the, this terminal if it'll hold enough for this test and you can still see the meter over there and we are in AC mode and this one I'll just probe it on there by touching it so turning the power back on uh, I'll come over here and probe this remember it was 10.12 on the DC and we're actually consuming 11.55 on the AC side so yes there is a little bit of loss but in my sake it was uh, I really needed the uh, the conversion and it really helped me out a lot and my device works really well so I'm going to turn the power back off of the Omite let's crank this up and see what it can do we're going to take this back to the negative side of the device make sure it's up nice and high so it doesn't short out positive side here there we go put this on DC and let's do some cranking. All right, so power is on. We're still back at our 10.10 .10 volts, which is very nice. And I'm going to take this up to, let's say, 30 volts. I've got some motors that run off 30 volt DC. So even though the Ohmite says about 30 here, I would have to go up a little higher. And so you see how easy this works. Whatever you put in, you get just about that much out. There's probably a good uh, math percentage that you can calculate for loss, but basically just take your meter and measure it so let's crank this all the way up let's see what we got here we're at 62 uh, volts DC and uh, AC um, putting out about 80 volts we're at 75 volts here now I can't say that this dial is 100% accurate but uh, you can see here somebody a long time ago somebody wrote 115 I can't believe they would be that low that doesn't make any sense but who knows got all these pencil marks on here this is very vintage equipment guys so I'm about 110 here, and it's putting out 105 volts DC. Hey, why not go all the way? What can this thing really do? So I'm at the full maximum amount, in theory, 140 volts AC, and we're putting out 132 volts DC. So if you have a small motor, DC motor, this is a good way that you can actually control that, like a little rheostat. Okay, well, that's it for me. Let's turn this off. Uh, my name is Ken. This is the 3D Mojo channel. I hope you learned a little something out of this. I'm not an engineer by any means, but uh, you know, every once in a while you find a couple of devices out there that you really like and you just want to share it, and this is one of them. They're not expensive. Uh, you can get a five pack of a little smaller version of this. Uh, it's actually 35 amp rated also, 1000 volts, and it's a model KBPC3510. And right now they're running on Amazon 10 for $8.99. I'm going to order that myself and just keep a bunch of these things uh, hanging around. So anytime I got a project that I need to work on, I can convert the voltage quickly without having to wait for a shipment. So I hope this uh, helped you a little bit. If you uh, got something out of this, please give me a little thumbs up. Again, this is Ken with the 3D Mojo channel. I do a lot of stuff with custom 3D machines and CNC processing and machinery. So uh, that's it for now. Have a great build and stay safe.